Well, hey everyone, this is Chris DiFurio with Case to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who has been creating espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. That is nearly 100 years of innovation, beauty, dependability. It's the reason why some of the best coffee bars in the world use La Marzocco. It's the quintessential espresso machine of the industry. And the innovation that La Marzocco demonstrates in their espresso machines is clearly seen in machines like the KB90 espresso machine with its straight in locking portafilters that is helping your ergonomics. You've got the scales in the drip tray for accuracy of your extraction, as well as the auto flush feature, which helps with workflow and cleanliness. The espresso machine is the heart of your business. And for that reason, you want the best, which is why I highly recommend you choose La Marzocco. Again, check them out over at LaMarzoccoUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is creating custom branded mobile apps for coffee shops who want to offer their customers a unique way to not only order remotely, but to connect with your brand. A custom branded mobile app from Espressly means you're not just another dot on a map. Your business is basically represented in the customer's phone. So anytime they want coffee, they just open up your app. They see your menu. They see your logo and colors. It's the next best thing to being in your store ordering at the counter. And it's a no-risk model with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems, including Square. So I would highly recommend if you're on the fence, you've been thinking about mobile ordering, go ahead and check them out today and have them get started on your app over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about a concept that I think might be very helpful for you as you seek to refine the way that you approach different tasks and standards and reinforcing quality behind the bar. And it kind of stems from a point of maybe anxiety and blessing at the same time. So all of us have experienced having a staff member who is just amazing. They are really great at their job. They are just the kind of person that we wish we could keep forever. And, you know, then of course the anxiety comes in where I don't know if I can keep them forever. And, you know, I I wish that I could bottle what they have and then give that to the other staff because, you know, by and large, you're always going to have kind of a spectrum of, um, let's just say competencies, you know, and skills, and people are going to be at different stages. And you want to make sure that, you know, everybody is doing as good a job as they possibly can. But really, this barista is so amazing. The things they do, you just wish, again, like you could just pass that on to other people. And I have some good news. Well, some bad news. Let's start with the bad news first. First of all, you're probably not going to be able to keep that person forever. Usually these special staff members, they come in, they wow us. And I'm not talking about being a showboat or anything. I'm talking about somebody who is just the ideal employee, if you know what I mean. But so there's, they have good character. They not only do the work, they are able to really exemplify the standards that uh, you set out and maybe even, you know, elevate the experience beyond what you even thought yourself, All right? So that person is not going to stay with you forever. And what many of us do is we just bemoan the fact that this is the case. And when they move on, we just kind of get into this slump where we just start looking at everybody through the lens of disappointment. And we think, what we should do is try to find a replacement for that person, somebody who has that special something. But in truth, we may have wasted an opportunity to get what is the closest thing, I think, to bottling what that person has. And that is to allow our systems and standards to be shaped by the behaviors of the best staff that we have. Instead of just saying, you know, accepting that this is great and that they're doing a great job and then just waiting and not doing anything with that until they leave, we should be including them in the process of helping us create the standards and systems that will give more consistency to our businesses. Maybe if you don't want to 
put the burden on them to help you create those systems, you can simply use their example as a way to inspire yourself to create the next version, two or three of the way you open a cafe, the way you close, the way that you operate behind the bar with hospitality between each other and between the staff and your customers. But if we are just asleep at the wheel, so to speak, we're not really paying attention to the lessons that we are learning and we are just being impressed by the example that we're seeing, then there, there, there's a gap between those two things. We want to learn the lesson by observing what is it that this particular staff member has that we desire so much and that maybe we wouldn't have even realized that we wanted that for our own business until somebody came along and showed us. And that's part of the co-creative process of having a, a cafe is it's not just your great ideas that make this a great thing. In fact, I'd say if you're the only one making the decisions on what gets done and how it gets done and you, you it, everything's coming down from on high, you're probably just going to have a stagnant culture, you know, one that is more likely to descend into a fear-based compliance than a, a thriving culture that produces life, the kind of thing that people can kind of sense it's palatable when they walk into a space is this a culture that is vibrant well then maybe there's a lot more of a conversation happening between staff and administration and the customers and all of the little intersecting groups of people that, that make up a coffee shop for what it is and there's an episode that we had a long time ago i think it was maybe about two years ago, three years ago, it was called the conversational reality of your coffee bar. And that was taken from, you know, it was my inspiration was taken from David White, whose book I've recommended many times. It's called Crossing the Unknown Sea. And it's kind of a pilgrimage of meaning through vocation. So very philosophical, very powerful book. And I, I just love the way that uh, David kind of contends with the idea of meaning and vocation and how the two of those things meet in our lives. But his main premise was that there is a conversation happening between what's happening now and your idea of what you were expecting to happen and how well you attend to that conversation will determine the quality of your future. So if you think of that as, you know, in this real microcosm of you and the best staff that you have ever had or the best staff that you have now, your job is to be curious and investigate and, and attend to that conversation and listen to what this situation is telling you and bottle that in the form of this is now our new normal. This is the level at which I want to start hiring people in the next two years, right? This is the kind of thing that I want people to do when they greet customers or you see what I'm getting at here. It's not that you're just observing and being thankful and then you've kind of wasted that opportunity once that person leaves. You're taking full advantage by listening, by attending to the lessons that this individual is giving you in showing you what is possible in your own space and maybe even coming up with ideas and ways of doing things that you never would have and this is part of why some of the best coffee bars in the world are the best is because this is a, a mindful and collaborative process that if we show up for it and if we allow ourselves to be taught those lessons as we go, we create something that never could have been just planned out in a business plan or, you know, just coming from only your imagination. It is truly magical. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I think you could probably think of a, a couple of past employees or somebody right now that is showing you the possibilities of the heights you can reach. And your responsibility now is to tend to that and to allow for it to help you shape the norm going forward, the systems and the standards for what the next few years will look like in your cafe. So I hope that this is helpful and I hope it makes sense. It's something that I've been kind of mulling over for a little bit now, an idea that I've wanted to share with you. So again, yeah, I hope that it's been of, of uh, benefit to you. And thank you very much for tuning in as always. And I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the shop.